Welcome to the Front Seat Life Podcast. This is Jessica Butts, your host and CEO and creator of Front Seat Life, where I help you be unapologetically who you are in your life, love, and business. Hello, Front Seat Lifers. It is Jessica, your host, and I am excited to bring you a pretty funny episode today. So this person, Mandy Asplund, you've heard her before in the podcast. She's a client. Uh, she wrote her own book and she was interviewing me for the book, uh, to be in her book. And it turned out to be this really rich, amazing conversation. It was almost like we were just chatting because it wasn't, it wasn't meant to be a podcast. It wasn't technically meant to be shared in this way. We were just kind of riffing and she was going to transcribe it and have it into her book. And when about, well, you'll hear, listen to the whole thing. And at the very end, um, I talk about the moment when I realized, oh shit, this is actually going to be a really great podcast episode. So <laughs> that happens. And it's a, quite honestly, it's one of my favorite conversations I've ever had ever with anyone. It's rich. It's about having a purpose driven life and a purpose driven business. Uh, I actually don't even think what we're talking about is necessarily about business. It's just about out your mess is your message and and your branding and and just being purposeful and purpose driven in everything that you do. So I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, I re listened to it this morning and laughed and cried a little bit. And um, I hope that you get a lot out of it. It inspires you, as that is always my hope, and that you enjoy it very much. And uh, will leave us a review over on iTunes. So enjoy. I would just love for you to tell me the name of your business and explain in your own words a little bit about what you do. Yeah. So the name of my business is Front Seat Life and I am the CEO and creator of Front Seat Life where I help people be unapologetically who they are in their life, love, and business. So it's all about kind of three parts. Who are you? Where are you going? And how are you going to get there? Love it. Yeah. So can you... Tell me how long you have been in this role of an entrepreneur and sort of if this is your first business or where you started and kind of how you got, got this business going. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, you know, I think everybody's story is so fascinating about how they get to entrepreneurship. I think mine started, you know, as a kid, not even knowing that I wanted to do this, not even knowing what it was. But um, I tell the story often that I was with my mom and I was a kid and we went to go see some keynote speaker. Like I didn't even know what the heck it was, but I remember being all motivated. And I mean, I was probably in fifth grade or something and thinking, I don't know what that is, but I want to do that. Like whatever just happened that was amazing. That person was amazing. Everybody felt amazing. Like I want to be the person that makes people feel fantastic. So I want to do that thing. So I think way back then, like you and I know about manifesting and we believe in God. And so I believe now, again, I didn't obviously know that at the time, but you know, however many 40 years later or whatever, knowing that that's probably been my journey all along. And so, you know, like most people, I ignored it and I did the traditional thing. I went to the traditional college. I got the traditional degree in human freaking resources. Like how boring is that? And then I just went into corporate America. So I did the thing that you're supposed to do. I did the thing that I now try to talk people out of doing is listening to the status quo. And so worked in human resources forever, you know, married the guy out of college, did the whole thing. And I like, I think most entrepreneurs just get an itch. I just got this itch in my mid thirties and I just ignored it for so long. I suppressed it. I knew there was something else and more powerful and more meaningful that I was supposed to be doing. But who, who listens to that? Like, it's freaking terrifying. Like who, and there's that feeling of like, who am I? 
why am I better? Why am I different? Why, why, why me? Why should I do anything different than what everybody else is doing? They're all going to their nine to five job. They seem to be seemingly happy and fine. Why aren't I? Um, and then I just learned about type and I learned, actually, I don't even think that was it. I basically just one day said, fuck it. Like I just, I can't do this anymore. I can't stay in this oppressive marriage. I can't stay in this oppressive career. I think it was, you know, you're, it was a bit of a midlife crisis, but a good one in this sense that I was 35 and I literally thought, am I going to do this shit for the next 35 years until I'm 70? And that thought depressed me more than anything ever in my life has. I just thought, I don't want to be married to this guy. I don't want to live this fine, normal life. And I sure as shit don't want to work for somebody else doing something that I could care less about for the next 35 years. So I, you know, I think that was probably God tapping me on the shoulder and I just up and turned my whole life around. Um, I don't know if I would suggest that for everybody, but why not? I just did it. I quit my job. (laughs) I, uh, went against my husband's permission, if you will, and um, went back to graduate school. And I, and it was a a struggle. Every single step, Mandy, every single step of that part of my life was a struggle and effort. I was with someone who 100% did not support me, did not want me to change my life, wanted me to stay in the status quo. And now I know why, because he was fearful that I would leave him, which of course is exactly what happened, but he couldn't, he couldn't play along. Like I was rising and he wanted me to sink and I just wasn't going to play along. So uh, I went back to graduate school. Our marriage got real, real bad at that time because again, I was evolving and growing and he was deep into his addiction and deep into his shit. And um, it was just an awful, awful struggle part of my life. And I call that part, and I think most entrepreneurs, maybe not entrepreneurs, but most people in particular go through some part of this part of their life. If you will, this is the climax. This is the part of the movie, you know, that gets like really intense and everything was hard. And, um, this word in particular was very powerful for me at the time. And I hear this from clients still today that it was incongruent. My life felt incredibly incongruent. I had this, this husband who wanted me to live a certain way. I had somewhat of a family still at the time who want, you know, still question, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Why do you need this thing? Just be this certain way. And then I was in this graduate school program that was all about do what you want to do and be empowered and go do this thing. And I, I just constantly felt like I was living two different lives. Mm-hmm. Um, And so after I graduated from grad school, I became a psychotherapist and the struggle continued because then I still had this feeling that this is awesome, yet I still feel like there's something more. Mm -hmm. And that was another part of the struggle. I left my marriage at that time. I needed to just uh, keep my head above water. To be honest, I was completely in survival mode. And that was another telling time of why do you need more? I mean, my mom in particular, I think I remember her just saying things like, when is enough enough for you? And, and judging myself at the time and now knowing like that's my greatest gift is listening to that. This isn't enough and it's okay to push forward. It's more than okay. It's actually my gift in this world. So I did. I just keep going. I just keep going. Well, that's how I got here. <laughs> I mean, it's a very powerful and beautiful story, you know, though, about how you got to this point. And it's interesting because I think that this kind of plays into one of the questions I had a little bit later, but I think I'd like to kind of visit right now is it's incredible that despite all of the the challenges that you faced and the naysayers that you faced, like you still pushed through and you were able to accomplish what you've accomplished and you know, something that I talk about in my book is the power behind a purpose driven business versus just starting a business to start a business. Oh, it doesn't work. And so I'm curious if you could maybe just speak to that a little bit and how you see, you know, have that difference play out and how powerful, you know, that purpose can really be in creating a foundation for your business. Yeah, it's everything. 
I mean, it's everything. If you don't have a purpose and a passion, and I will say, I, I firmly believe this actually, and I think this is um, something that's a little controversial right now. Um, if you don't have a personal story and, and again, a connection to what you're doing, the likelihood that it's going to sustain is not great. Again, this is for, you know, this isn't like IBM or anything or, you know, Mm -hmm. Apple or something, but these are like small businesses that we have to have that passion. We have to, it comes from inside. Like I, you know, there's a statement that I didn't come up with. Somebody else did that. Your mess is your message. Mm -hmm. And that then becomes how you fuel what you do. In fact, you know, I don't know if I should tell this right now, so you might cut this out, but I found out yesterday, I was with a VIP client that she had hired somebody else that I actually know really well. And I think her business doesn't do very well because of this point. And she told this person, it's very point blank, don't share your story. No one cares. And I said, she's fucking wrong. She's wrong. The way that we connect with people is actually through our stories. So if you don't have purpose around it, you don't have passion. And and quite honestly, if you don't have a personal story around what you do, it's not going to translate into a business because what we need to run a business is sales. I mean, that's the bottom line. Otherwise, it's just a hobby. Like there's a lot of Instagrammers out there right now that are just taking pictures, selling nothing, doing whatever. But if we actually want to sell a product, I believe we have to connect with our consumers and we connect with our consumers by being one real, uh, being authentic, being true to our message and sharing our damn stories. You know, what doesn't sell is talking to somebody. It's condescending. No one wants perfection. No one wants quaffedness. That's my word, being quaffed. Mm -hmm. Like no one wants perfection. They want realness. And so your brand needs to reflect that so that you can connect with your consumers. And that all of that is encompassed in the passion, the purpose. Um, And again, just kind of that mess being your message. I love everything that you said is like literally what I preach in this book you know, about your personal brand, really, you know, a big piece of that, that I talk about is owning your purpose. And in order to find your purpose, um, you know, I talk about needing to own your story, you need to, and not just the the good, fun, happy times, but the really crappy, challenging, difficult situations that have made you into the person that you are today. And that is the whole like heart and soul behind this book is that the foundation of a, like a truly solid foundation for a successful business is one that comes with owning that personal story with like living inside that story of who you are and what you've become through all of the good and the bad, you know? Yeah. And I will say here that I hear this a lot as a former you know therapist that a lot of people think, oh, I don't have a story. I'm not that interesting. Mm-hmm. That's bullshit. Everybody has a story. There's something in your life that has affected you in some way. It doesn't have to be trauma, right? People talk, I mean, I say trauma a lot with people and they're like, oh, I've never, you know, been raped or, you know, had anything. I'm like, that's not necessarily trauma. Trauma is your parents talking to you in a weird way or uh, you're a divorced family or your husband cheating on you or addiction or whatever. Like there's a lot of traumas in this world. And this is such a dorky example to give, but I was, I'm obsessed with the bachelor. I freaking love that show. It's my, dirty little, it's okay. <laughs> oh, it's God. It's my dirty little secret. I love it. Uh-huh. So last night I was watching the episode And there was a woman on there that, in my opinion, was very quaffed and perfect. And she was trying to come off as, she literally said, I just don't really have anything to tell you about my life because I'm so, you know, like, it's just been great. And he straight up sent her home in that moment because he literally was like, I mean, it's such a good example of like globally, and you're talking about branding, of showing up and pretending that you're perfect nobody wants that, including Colton, the bachelor. Nobody is going to resonate with, oh my God, I am beautiful all the time and nothing bad has happened to me and my life is fucking perfect and I'm a size two and I eat perfect and I'm perfect. Like nobody resonates with that shit. 
knock it off. Yep. And that's so much of what I talk about is, you know, we're so afraid to, to just own our story and own our shit. But it's like, those are the things that make us into this like incredible person that we are in that allow us to be able to have the expertise that we do to help other people get through what we went through. And it's like, I 100%, your story is everything. Being able to have people relate to your story and what you've gone through, that's what drives people to your business. That's what connects. That's what sells. It's not here, I made this beautiful product with a great, it's got great colors and image and totally. Thank you. No, no, thank you. And I I mean, uh, thank you for the compliment. And obviously I agree because you're my branding person and, and I trust you because it, you know, and again, I tell that, you know, this is our new joke, but I tell the story all the time, but your readers should probably know this too, is that you know, you and I discovered the Jessica smile. Like I didn't know that that was a thing until you were like, give me that Jessica smile. I'm like, what smile this smile? And you're like, yep, that's it. And I was like, I didn't know. I mean, no one looks at themselves enough to know that you have a Jessica smile, but you saw it and you knew it. And now I will like direct you basically to say, I don't want any other pictures. I don't want me looking perfect or pretty. I want the Jessica smile pictures, because that's now I know who I am. And it's not the cutest picture in the world. Like it shows my wrinkles and it shows my little nose scrunched up and I'm not looking at the camera. My eyes are closed, but it's me. And that then becomes, it's just authentic. It's just who I am. But I think that's the part of this, this branding that you're talking about is just let it be who you are. It's not perfection. It's just, it's showing, it's just showing all your stuff. Yeah. But I will say, in my opinion, I think that is what makes that image so perfect. (laughs) No, like the fact that there are, that it's imperfect makes it perfect, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All those things that you mentioned, all those things are so you though, like they make you, you. And when people, you know, going back to the thing, like even about weight loss, you know, and stuff you say, oh, I've got some wrinkles or whatever in those pictures. It's like, nobody's seeing those. Yeah, people true. are literally like seeing inside of your heart and seeing true. soul and just seeing that laughter and happiness and that beauty yeah. in you. People aren't like, Oh, she's got a little wrinkle on her neck. Yeah, she's yeah, laughing. Yeah. You know, like it's it's not it's not those things and and everybody has their own thing. I think this is a really important piece too is that this isn't about a comparison to who you are, Mandy, or who I am, or who anybody else is. It's your own uniqueness. Mm-hmm. And whether that be, again, introvertedness or extrovertedness, or you're a total book nerd, or you're a super extroverted keynote speaker, yeah. or you know, you're a fly by the seat of your pants, or you're, it doesn't, that's not the point. Everybody has their own unique thing. And when we can start to learn that. I mean, that's my job is to help people like learn that part of who they are, be unapologetically who you are and love yourself for who you are and love those in your life for who you are. You then take that to the next level with the branding piece of how do you show up in your business and on social media in a way that is representative to who you are. And that piece has been I, it just feels like a game changer because it's so much more authentic and real and it's just, it's just, it's in alignment. I think that's the word I want. It's in alignment. Yeah. And I think that's why this, like in a weird way, this book does really fit so well with, you know, what you're teaching, like some of what, well, not some, like a big part of this book and what I talk about is really asking people to evaluate things about themselves aside from all these outside opinions, you know, like really, truly, honestly asking themselves, what do they value? What are they passionate about? And not writing down these things because they think they should, or because someone else is telling them to, or because society says that this is what you should do. But really like looking inside themselves and asking those tough questions, what do I love? What, what lights me up? You know, what, sets my heart on fire. And those questions are tough to get to because we've had such a lifetime of layer upon layer built up, you know, just of 
covering that stuff up and hiding who we really are to put on all these masks and, you know, identities of who we should be. Yeah. And you know that this is my pa- I mean, this is my BHAG in this world. This is my passion is to help people stop doing that. Yeah. But I see that show up so often, especially in, you know, the younger generation. That's not even true though. I think you're right. It's just, a, it's, it's everywhere. It's pe- women, women in particular, I think my age and your age, you're quite a bit younger than I am. And then even the next generation, the teenagers coming up of trying to be other people. And that's part of the reason I don't get my hair done. I don't get my makeup done when we do photo shoots because I don't want to look like anybody other than myself. I mean, you know, your hair lady will put some braids in or mess it up or do whatever, but it's about just showing up wearing the lipstick I want to wear and looking like I'm going to look. And so, uh, and I see other pictures sometimes of people that look, and I've had those before too, these super quaffed pictures and you get them back and you're like, this is like a zhuzhed version of myself. And it's, fine potentially for what it is, but it's really not actually who I am. I mean, you know, when we're shooting together, I'm freaking wearing tutus and I am wearing my girl boss t-shirts and I'm just wearing what I would normally wear. It's not about going out and overproducing yourself. It's about showing up in this place of authenticity. And that, and that's the, I, I think the power of actually the work that both you and I do is is that of just showing up and being yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I love so much and I find so much power in is like helping people discover and sort of figure out who that is, but then to own it, you know, to like not just know it, but to own it and believe in it and to just like trust that all of that is enough. And And, and girl, that's a process. I mean, can we just have a, I mean, let's just pause for everyone listening right now, like that is a process. Yeah. We don't just one day be like, fuck it. I'm going to like be who I am. It's a process. I mean, if I'm being fully transparent, like I I have realized I've been on one for the last five years since I got divorced. I mean, I'm finally in this new relationship where I am showing up different. It's not even about him. If I met him three years ago, we, we would have been broken up by now this would have been doomed a long time ago because I would have been different. And it is fascinating to just watch the process of how we become more and more evolved into who we are. And so allowing that process to unfold and not judging it and not having your first photo shoot be done and being like, Oh, that's close, but not quite there. But wait till you get to your fifth one. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, I'm, I'm on a roll here. (laughs) And that's the thing. Like I, that's why I love so much to see clients multiple times. I would agree. Every single time I see them, they come more and more alive and they just like discover more of who they are. And, um, you know, I, I can see more of them just like shining through and, um, you know, in, speaking about this being such a process, I think it's one that we never, never, ever like fully complete. You know, I think like as we go through our life, it's continually a process of rediscovering ourselves at different ages and different places in new chapters and all those layers of crap that get thrown on us like time and time again from, you know, family or friends or society or social media or whatever it is those layers don't just go away. Like they're constantly coming at us every day. And so it's always a process of sorting through all that mess, you know, and really like finding who we are within it, you know, learning to take the messages that apply and to leave the rest. And it's not an easy process. Like that takes a lot of conscious effort and work, you know? And um, so I don't think it's something we ever fully finish, but I think it's definitely a journey that we can go on. That's, absolutely beautiful and incredible in so many ways. And it's so fun. I mean, I, in graduate school, I had this professor, uh, in fact, I think I mentioned him before, um, Tim Weber. And he talks about the fact that he used to wake up to, he's been married for 35 years and he wakes up every day, uh, to a new woman. And it's kind of a joke of his and that every moment we are growing and evolving. And so you're right. What we're doing right now we can't predict what we're going to do in a year or six months or five years because we're going to be different. I mean, we literally like this conversation that you and I are having right now will potentially change us. 
or evolve us in some way. And so tomorrow morning, we wake up different. So we never know what that process is going to be. And I, I, I love that. And I think that's why your branding continues to grow and evolve. Uh, your business continues to grow and evolve. Your relationships, absolutely. Like one of the biggest things that I see in couples is when couples try to hold somebody and you know their spouse or their partner with who they were five years ago. And I'm always like, no, 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 no. We're, we're not doing that because she's not the same person that she was five years ago. You need to give her some damn credit. Like, are you the same person you were five years ago? We are completely different people. So I, I, I love that. And by the way, how did you get so wise at 29 years old? It's just incredible. I don't know. I one old soul woman. I know. I, I really do <laughs> feel that way. Like I have this conversation that we're having is life for me. I, I can agree. talk about this stuff for, for days, you know, on end. And it's like, I have never really had a lot of, I've had, you know, I could probably count on less than a hand people in my life that I've been able to have conversations like this with. And I just, I don't know. My soul is just like, just feels so on fire, like being able to talk about this stuff. I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. I think part of it is probably, you know, my own past and just, I did have to grow up very quickly and mature quickly. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I think just also the way I look at the world is my own gift from God. And there's people listening right now too, that feel the same way. And they, they, they're seeking just like I was seeking, you know, 15 years ago or 10 years ago. God, that was only 10 years ago. Wow. Wow. And you are seeking, we are seekers. We seek to have deeper, more intense conversations. And that's, you know, that's why, you know, you have things that you have, you're writing this book and I have the things that I have and I write books and do speaking and have front seat life communities and have a podcast and do all of these things. I wouldn't do any of this shit if, I mean, it's a lot of work, but I know that as a seeker myself, there's other people seeking. And so, yeah, that's why we do these crazy things, right? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. So we only have a couple minutes and yeah. we got to like none of my questions. Oh, I, but you know what? Do we need to like, I, there's, I mean, I, what we talked about no, was probably I better, but. Yeah, no, talk. this is great content. There are two <laughs> things that I really would love to yeah. get. You know? Yeah. Go. So one of them is um, if you could just tell me about like the first time you really learned about or um, heard about the concept of personal branding and mm-hmm. along with that sort of how you define it. Yeah, that's very interesting. So I'm going to start with the second question. I think the way that I personally would define or if we were going to put like a, a descriptor to it is it's an outward visual of how you are inside. So just like dressing. So let's give Lisa Fisher a shout out right now. Like Lisa Fisher does that with clothing. So people have always said, oh, you dress so fun and you wear such bright colors. I'm like, it's just how I feel on the inside. Like if I wake up depressed or down one day, I'm probably going to wear some black or something. But most of the time, look at what I'm wearing today. I mean, I got this crazy ass cheetah dress on and bright, huge orange earrings. And I mean, it's, this is how I feel. And so I think our clothing is a outward representation of how we're feeling on the inside. And I believe our branding is the exact same thing. It's our personality. It's how, what's going on in our lives. It's how we feel, uh, basically out into social media or our website. So to answer that second question, or technically the first question is how did I first learn about it was when I built my very first website. Uh, you know, there's been probably 50 iterations since then, but my very first website, probably six or seven or eight or nine years ago was all of these questions. What do you want to say in the world? I mean, it, just like writing a book, it's like, it's the most clarifying process I think an entrepreneur can go through because it's like, what do you like? What do you care about? What's your point of view? How do you want to show up in the world? And basically, in my opinion, don't care what other people think. I mean, I'll never forget when I put my first website together, I was a therapist at the time and it was pink and it was pretty and it was very optimistic. And one of my friends said, 
are you sure that this is what you want to put out into the world as a therapist? Like, I can't imagine a whole lot of depressed people are going to want to do this. And I said, first of all, therapy is not just for depressed people. Um, and secondly, I am not going to diminish who I am to please other people because then I'm just going to be vanilla or it's just not going to be authentic. So I've been rocking my brand probably since day one. It's gotten definitely more clear. I mean, the tutu wearing and the saying fuck whenever I want and doing whatever I want to do, but it it, it evolves. But I would say from the get-go, um, if you look back on my old branding, in fact, I still have the exact same Jessica Butts logo that I had like nine years ago with a flower on it. Um, mm-hmm. And it's just who I am. And so uh, I just, I believe it is a representation of who you are on the inside. And I will say very clearly, not letting other people tell you, oh, oh, you know, therapists need to have warm colors or you need to do this because you deal with food or, you know, you need calm colors. Fuck that. Do whatever you want to do because here's the deal. You will attract the right kinds of clients based on how you put yourself out there. You know, I, my, one of the best compliments I ever got was from my old receptionist at my therapist's office. And she said, you have the nicest clients. They're like my favorite people. And I said, God, that's so nice. And she said, you know, that's a representation of you, don't you? And I was so taken back. I actually thought she didn't like me very much. And so I was like, that's such a nice compliment coming from you. And it's true. Like how we put ourselves out there. Do you want to be, again, introverted and nerdy and black and goth or bright and pink and however you are really you will attract those clients it's not about trying to get everybody to like you it's about attracting the right clients for you exactly and you know that's something else that I talk about in this book is using you know your personal brand to differentiate yourself in every possible way in your market, you know, and using all the things that make you unique and special to make you stand out and make you stand apart. And, you know, realizing that it's okay to not need everyone, like not everyone is going to be your client. And the more that you can be yourself and put those things out into the world about who you are and make those unique connections with people like, Those are the people you're going to start to draw in. And those are the people you want to work with. It's actually the biggest mistake most entrepreneurs make. Again, I was doing a VIP session here yesterday and she started going down this, oh, I'm just a health coach. And I go, nope, no, 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 no. I said, no, you have a very clear niche to work with people with chronic illness. And this, you, this is way too vague. I promise you, you are going to get lost in the shuffle. So I couldn't agree more. And it is one of the biggest mistakes people make is trying to be too broad. Yeah, there's a saying, again, another saying that I didn't make up, that broad is broke and niche Mm -hmm. is rich. So the more niche, I mean, that doesn't rhyme, so I say niche, but the the more niche or niche you can be, it's it's actually better. But people do the opposite. Oh, I need, everybody's my client. No, you're, you're gonna get lost in the mix. Yep, yeah, and I've so been there. You know, that was me for a really long time and that's why I could never figure out why I wasn't happy, you know, in my own business, even though I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And that's something I talk about. Like when I started photography, I thought I had to photograph everybody. But when I really found my niche and what I love doing, that's when my entire business just exploded. And And your work is better. Yeah. 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 Everything about it. Yeah. Um, okay. So last question that I would love, um, is if you could just give one piece of advice to someone who is starting their journey as an entrepreneur, like what would it be? Not even, you know, your best piece of advice or the most, you know, most important piece of advice, but what is something that you just really feel in your heart is something you would love to just share with someone who's trying to start their journey? God, girl, there's so many. I mean, that is such a hard question. I mean, I I guess I have to say, you've got to figure out who you are. You've got to figure out like what your passion is. So there's all the stuff around system structure, singular focus, all that shit I love to talk about. But the core of it, and it kind of is going on a line with what we're talking about is not starting something just to start it, but getting really clear about why. 
What is it for you? And one of my favorite exercises to do with all my clients is core values. And I think that ties into it. It's who are you as a person? You're obviously your personality type, what you're good at, what you suck at, but then why? You know, for me, building this business is not about the money. It's not about security. It's about freedom. And knowing what spurs me along versus what spurs you along versus anybody listening, like that is, that's the difference is knowing why you're doing what you're doing. Because here's the deal. This is not for the faint of heart. Mm -hmm. You know, owning your own business, being an entrepreneur is hands down the hardest thing I've ever done, yet the most rewarding. And so if I am not connected to a purpose and I am not connected to why, I would have given up a long ass time ago. And so if people don't understand that part of it, yes, it's important to know the numbers. Yes, it's important to know all of that stuff. But the most important piece is why are you doing this? And my, I think one of my skills with people is pulling that out of what, you know, why are you doing this? What happened in your life that you care about this? Most often the mess becomes the message. And so, yeah, I would just say that. I think it's, it, it, it's a critical piece because it keeps you going long-term when you have that purpose, your passion, and you know who you are and why you're doing it. And I love that so much. You know, when I, talk about this idea of personal branding in the book. It's like, it goes beyond this, the tangible physical, you know, your logo and your business cards and your beautiful marketing materials, you know, but it's really like behind the scenes stuff. It's like really figuring out and narrowing down, like why you do what you do and how you do it and showing that to the world, you know, that's, I think where your clients connect with you and where that big piece of success comes from is having that purpose, having that why and making the connections with people to tell them, you know, this is why I do what I do. And there's so many connections inside that story. You know, I do think it's very connected to your story and, you know, just where you came from and what you've been through. Yeah. Um, Okay. So can I say something? Yes. You're going to kill me, but we (laughs) started doing this for an interview for Mandy's book that's going to be coming out in May on her 30th birthday. However, while we've been doing this, I was like, this is an amazing podcast episode. (laughs) So this is now a podcast episode. Oh my goodness. And here's the deal. Mandy is my client, my friend. Uh, She's my photographer and she's an INFJ. And if I would have asked her to do this, she, it would, it probably, she would have wanted to know the questions ahead of time. You probably be, would have been really nervous, but it was perfect. You were perfect. It was perfect. So, um, I hope you're not going to kill me. You might send me a text after this and be like, I'm going to kill you. Um, but this is totally a podcast episode. Well, I won't kill you. I am very honored and you do know me very well because had you have said something at a time, I would have been a total nervous wreck. <laughs> <laughs> and I know for thinking everything, but you know, I think um, one thing I am learning about myself is that you know when I'm able to talk about this kind of work and you know what I do and this this purpose that you and I have, I think very much in common. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just something about things just flow and they yep. come out, and it's like the words are there and. Yep. I am honored that you felt like this was worthy to record for a podcast. So thank you. Yeah, we got about five minutes in and I was like, oh, here we go. Yeah, this is too <laughs> good to not be doing this. And then I was like, oh, she's going to murder me at some point. But anyway, it's going to be awesome. So thank you. I think you were going to thank me, but now it's a, like yeah. a mutual thank you. <laughs> I love it. Well, I do thank you. Um, and thank I'm so you. looking forward to you know, you being a part of this book. And I truly am just honored for all the ways that you've influenced this book. And um, to have you be actually a part of it is kind of like the whole the whole package. And so I'm really grateful and just thankful for everything for our friendship and our, you know, business relationship and all of the above. Absolutely. And the feeling is mutual. It is 
my greatest pleasure to work with people like you that work hard. They get it to watch you evolve, grow your business, grow your personal life, change, evolve. Like I'm a better person for knowing you and I think vice versa. So it's just, you know, again, this is one of those moments of being an entrepreneur that's like full circle and pretty awesome. So I'm really glad we did this. Me too. All right. Okay. (laughs) Thank you so, so much. You're welcome. All right, everybody, I have a confession to make. I have a new obsession, and that obsession is reading your ridiculously wonderful, loving, amazing reviews on iTunes. I love them. None of this even matters without all of you. So as a thank you, each week I will be reading one review on air and calling out your review with your name or your iTunes handle. So here's how it's going to go. You're going to go to Instagram and follow Follow me at Front Seat Life. When you hear your name called out on the podcast, you are going to send me a DM with your address and say, oh my gosh, you just read my review. And I or my team will be sending you some Front Seat Life swag. We've got books and we've got tank tops and we've got journals and we have these adorable pink swells. So we will be choosing from the goodie bag and sending it out as a thank you. So thank you, thank you, thank you in advance advance. And I am so deeply honored to have the opportunity to thank you back. Today's review comes from Lizzie B 74. And this is a real cute one. It's five stars and says, listen up, you won't regret it. Jessica is the freaking bee's knees. She shows up as her authentic self, funny, enthusiastic, and knowing her stuff. She has changed my life since 2013. Wow. And I haven't ever looked back. Give Jessica a listen. She never disappoints. Lizzie, thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, Truly, thank you so much for listening. I know that you have a ton of options and the fact that you are taking time to listen to the Front Seat Life podcast means absolutely everything to me. If you're interested in learning more about the Front Seat Life way of life in the community, there's a couple ways that you can do that. First is always starting with your personality assessment tool. It's available on my website at jessicabutts.com. It's totally free and it will help you figure out your personality type so you'll have some idea of what we're talking about. Next is if you're interested in hiring me for a keynote or some coaching or or strategy days, or the fabulous and amazing Front Seat Life community. You can find out all about all of that at jessicabutts.com. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time.